Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be diving into the world of allspice dram or pimento dram, pimento liqueur? Allspice liqueur? Well, we're gonna sort this all out in today's video and we're gonna see which one of the three main brands that you can buy right now is gonna make the best ancient mariner. So, let's do this. Hey everyone, I'm Andy and this is Mixing Up Tiki. And on today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look and deep dive into the world of allspice dram or is it pimento liqueur or pimento dram? Well, we're gonna address all those questions today. We're also gonna be testing, tasting all three side by side. I'm gonna give you some data on all three of them, and then we're gonna be mixing up some ancient mariners to see which one makes the best ancient mariner possible. So what's the difference between pimento dram, pimento liqueur, allspice dram, and allspice liqueur? Well, nothing actually. They're all the same. They're all just different names for the same thing. You see, all of this, and we're gonna go with allspice dram from here on out, simply because when I mention pimento, people think cheese in the United States, and that's not really where we're heading. Although, I know there was a trend about a Parmesan espresso martini. Maybe we can find something with tiki in there? I don't know. If that's something you guys wanna see, let me know in the comments below and we'll explore that. I don't wanna know if I want to. But anyway, now as I was saying, allspice dram, which is what we're gonna call it from here on out, is a native liqueur to Jamaica. It's a spiced liqueur, but its main flavor profile comes from allspice berries, which come from the pimento tree, hence where the naming confusion comes from. Now in Jamaica, you'll find this in people's kitchen and they use it basically as like a seasoning. But this is a tiki cocktail channel, so why do we see it in tiki cocktails? Well, it comes from the Caribbean. And so we see Don the Beachcomber take this and add it in little dashes or small amounts and things like the three dots in a dash, or Trader Vic in his version of the Navy Grog. Now there's a running joke in the mixology community that all spice dram is the bartenders or mixologists basically pumpkin spice. It comes out during the season and it's everywhere. And it's actually for good reason. In reality, pumpkin spice actually contains a decent amount of allspice in it. So they're actually pretty interchangeable. So right now in front of us, we have the three main brands that you can buy commercially right now. We have St. Elizabeth, we have the Bitter Truth Company, and we have Hamilton. We're gonna be testing these side by side. I'm gonna give you some facts on each one of them. And then, like I said, we're gonna see how they compare in a Ancient Mariner. All right, so let's pour these, let's talk about each of them, and let's taste them side by side. All right, so starting on my left or your right, as you can see, we have St. Elizabeth. So as we can see, it is a deep amber color in the glass. It's got a little bit of legs on it. I do know that this is made with a pot still Jamaican rum base. It comes in at 22.5 ABV. And according to my refractometer, it has a bricks of about 37, so relatively sweet. Now on the nose, and you're gonna have to pardon my nosing details today, I'm coming off of a cold, so I'm still a little congested. We get that classic allspice flavor right up front. It's quite pungent. There is something else in there a little bit too. It's Maybe it's the pot still Jamaican rum that's coming through because there is a bit of fruitiness to this. On the palate, it's thick, it's viscous, it's sweet, and it punches you in the face with allspice. For anybody that's ever worked with St. Elizabeth, you know a little goes a long way because this thing is really allspice forward. Now with that in mind, we do get a bit of that fruitiness from the Jamaican rum. And then on the back end, there is a couple of other spices, possibly clove and or cinnamon, but they don't disclose uh, what other spices they use in there. So this is just me guessing. Overall, it's a really good allspice dram. Moving on to the Bitter Truth Company. This is even darker in the glass. We're talking like a deep amber mahogany here. It's got some legs, so I know that there's a decent amount of sweetness in here. Now, this one doesn't punch me in the nose with allspice like the St. Elizabeth did. This is much more fruit forward that we're getting probably from the Jamaican rum. So this does also use a Jamaican rum base as well. I don't know if it's pot still, they don't disclose that. Yeah, definitely more fruit forward, like red fruit, red stone fruit, like currants, and maybe plums. Okay, so I think this one's a little bit sweeter. Let me check my notes here. So the Bitter Truth Company comes in at 22% ABV, so just slightly lower than the St. Elizabeth, and a bricks of about 38, so it is slightly sweeter than the St. Elizabeth. Now, its perceived sweetness is a little bit more than the St. Elizabeth, and that's because it's not as upfront forward in the allspice flavor. It's definitely got more of that red stone fruit, 
more of that currant, more of that Jamaican kind of fruit flavor to it. The allspice is 100% there, so don't think that if you add this to a cocktail, you're gonna miss that. It's just not as punchy as the St. Elizabeth. Yeah. It's definitely good, but there's this. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was trying to think maybe there's something else there. I'm still getting a couple other baking spices. Again, maybe some clove or mace, some cinnamon, somewhere in there, maybe cardamom. Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe there's more cardamom in the Bitter Truth one. Because leaving this a little bit of a numbing feeling that I am uh, didn't get from the St. Elizabeth. Possibly that's cardamom. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, so this is the Bitter Truth Company. This, I think you could add a little bit more to a cocktail without overpowering. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Hamilton. Now, right away, we're gonna see a huge difference here. All the other ones were clear and had an amber color. This one's a little cloudy, and actually I had to shake the bottle because it definitely settled. And it's uh, not really amber at all, it's more like a hay color or a golden color. Um, so we're definitely getting a difference in color here. Now, the Hamilton comes in at 30% ABV, so um, higher by almost eight points than the other two. And then its Brix is about 28, according to my refractometer. So we're looking at almost a 10% difference in sugar content as well. Now, we do know that this is made with a Worthy Park pot still Jamaican rum. Um, this is the one that disclosed the most information. Um, so the good news is they all have a similar Jamaican rum base. Um, so, Let's see how this one is. Oh, okay, so this one is much more rum forward. Like, not the fruitiness of these, but literally like the ethanol that you would get from nosing Jamaican rum, like a Ray and Nephew or a Worthy Park Overproof or a Money Musk Overproof. Yeah, this almost smells like Smith & Cross, honestly. Wild, it's so different than these two. Let's try it. Wow, okay. So where these two were similar, this one is wildly different. I'm getting much more rum, much more rum for it. It's, it's like I'm tasting almost a sweetened Smith & Cross, but there's a small back end of allspice on the back palate uh, that kind of gives me that tingling um, kind of baking spice flavor, but it's not very prevalent. It's honestly more rum forward and if I didn't know any better, if you just handed this to me in a glass, I would almost think that this is a sweetened rum. This is crazy. It's insane that these two are relatively similar and this one is literally worlds apart. It's, it's crazy. Like, I don't mind drinking Smith & Cross neat and this literally reminds me as if I were to do like a Smith & Cross like old fashioned, but like up the sugar, maybe do like a half an ounce of like a rich syrup with some Smith and Cross. That's what that reminds me of a ton. So there you guys have it. Um, again, these two, very, very similar. This one, worlds apart. And that makes me excited because I can't wait to go make some Ancient Mariners with this. All right, so let's make some Ancient Mariners. now. The Ancient Mariner was created in 1994 by Jeff the Beach Bum Berry. It is not a classic tiki cocktail. In fact, this would be considered a modern tiki cocktail. Now, the reason that the Ancient Mariner came about was because this was Beach Bum Berry's attempt at recreating Trader Vic's Navy Grog. So the ingredients are very, very similar. The proportions are slightly different. And in order to make your Ancient Mariner, you are going to need lime juice, white grapefruit juice, cane syrup, allspice tram, aged Amarara rum, I'm using Hamilton 86, and dark Jamaican rum, I'm using Karuba. All right, so the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make all three of them side by side, we'll shake them up, we'll dump them, we'll top them with some ice, and then we'll sip them side by side to see which one I think makes the best Ancient Mariner. So, let's go. In your shaking tin, add three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 milliliters of lime juice. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of white grapefruit juice half an ounce or 15 milliliters of cane syrup. A quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters of your allspice dram. One ounce or 30 milliliters of an aged Demerara rum. One ounce or 30 milliliters of a dark Jamaican rum. Now add some pebble ice and whip shake for about five to eight seconds. 
Now grab a double old fashioned glass and open pour in. Top with more pebble ice. All right, so there you have it, our three ancient mariners. Now, I'd set them up in the same way that I did the tasting. On my left, your right, we have the St. Elizabeth, then the Bitter Truth Company, and finally the Hamilton. So, let's give them a try. Just such a good cocktail. Like, honestly, the Ancient Mariner is top three for me. And I compare that in the same aspect of like Vic's Navy Grog. They're very, very similar for me, and I enjoy them both thoroughly. And this is bright with a touch of citrus and just a touch of spice on the back end. Let's try the Bitter Truth Company. Also really good. I'm not getting as much spice, but still a really good cocktail. Let's try the Hamilton. Hmm. So, as expected, these two are very similar. Uh, this one punches a little bit harder. This one's definitely a little bit more subtle, which I expected. This one is just completely different. And it, again, tastes like I'm adding more rum to a cocktail than I am all spice dram. So out of the three, which one do I like the best? Honestly, I'm gonna have to hand it to the Santa Elizabeth because it makes, it shows up. This one, the allspice is so subtle that if you, I didn't know it was there, I may not even be able to taste it. So the allspice from the Santa Elizabeth definitely shows up even at a quarter ounce. This one plays so subtly that it's this lingering note like somebody whispered allspice in the room next to you. This one is like allspice is whispering in your ear. This one is, I don't even taste allspice at all to be honest. It tastes like I added Smith & Cross to this cocktail, which is just so wildly different for me. And it's, it's incredible because you know, they're all three allspice drams. And while two of them are relatively similar, this one is just so different. And while some people may love the Hamilton, I love Hamilton run, rums. I'm using the Hamilton 86. I love the 151. Their pot still uh, Jamaican rums, great. However, as an allspice dram, I just, it's not my jam. I don't love it. I don't think it does what it should be doing. And that's the problem. I love the rum profile behind it, I just wish it punched and had more allspice. These two, on the other hand, definitely more in the realm of allspice dram. This one, just, it's sweeter and it's not as punchy. You could add more of it to a cocktail without overpowering it, which is great, but honestly, most allspice cocktails don't have a lot in them. The only one I can think about is the Voodoo Grog, which has like three quarters of an ounce. And that's why this one, I think, is really where this shines. Now, do I wanna use three quarters of an ounce of this in a Voodoo Grog? Probably not. I'd probably switch to some of the other ones, but overall, if I'm gonna only pick one allspice dram, I'm gonna go with the St. Elizabeth. Well, anyway, there you guys have it. We took a deep dive into allspice dram. We did some side-by-side -side comparisons of what I would say are the top three brands. Now, before anybody comments in the section below, I can't get allspice dram where I live. Not a problem. I'm working on my own homemade recipe of allspice dram digging up some facts from old school allspice drams that Vic and Don used to use, and then we're gonna be making our own. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in an upcoming video. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stay tuned. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, follow me over on Patreon and on Instagram and TikTok. And until next time, guys, you know the deal. Take it easy.